What is up, everyone? Welcome, welcome to Nemesis Insider, your weekly podcast where we feature your favorite team creators on Nemesis. That was a sentence and a half. But yeah, I'm James Autumn. The guy below me is... Vengeance Gaming. Hello, friends. Welcome in. We call him Chase sometimes, but... Yeah, it's a lot easier. Chase, we do have an awesome guest here. We have... Do we? A guy who wears a hood, like, every stream. Every stream, and it's really impressive. He's got a really great beard. He's a world championship winning Apex Legends player. <sighs> Not even close. So we're in we're in the presence of greatness. We I'm are saying. in the presence of greatness. He's gonna teach us all about being professional Apex players and how I to believe, land our shots. I believe. Correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong. He's also one of the four hoodsmen. I believe he is one of the four hoodsmen. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna talk That's about all of this today. Everybody, please welcome Hood Guard. Welcome, man. Welcome. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Good to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just get right into it. Tell everybody who you are, where you came from, and how you got with us. Whatever order, it don't matter. <laughs> we, we can do it. We can do a general one. Uh, I'm Hoodguard. Uh, you can also just call me by my first name, Parker. That's perfectly fine. Um, most of my friends do, and people just get caught up in it anyway. Um, I am. I like to say I'm a variety streamer. Obviously, my main game is Apex. Uh, it's what I'm grinding right now, uh, for lack of a better term, but um yeah kind of variety streamer uh like fps fps games uh strategy games um any type of tactics games rpgs don't try to play me in fighting games i'll lose <laughs> i won't like it um or racing games oh thing, but yeah yeah we can talk about that <laughs> that's that's me james uh yeah it says koi on the uh on the on, on the thing no, it doesn't. Sorry, Hood. <laughs> no problem. I was like, wait, that's what Ivy's talking about. Oh, you changed it. <laughs> no. Above his webcam. Oh. Hey, check <laughs> me out. Now, now, look, it's cool. Not it's anyways, cool. Dealing continue. <laughs> continue while James fixes that. But yeah, I've been in Nemesis now, I don't know, eight months? Long longer? Almost you, a year? You join... Man, I don't I even know. I think it's been almost a year. It feels I feel like, like you five years. In a great way. Around December? Or like November? Maybe? I feel yeah, like that's about yeah. the time you joined. Yeah. It was definitely like fall, winter last year. Um, I was coming from... Uh, I'm not going to badmouth this team. This team is going through stuff. But it came uh, from a team called Omen Origins, uh, where I just felt... Um, we we as creators were not getting to create for the team. Uh, so a lot of us left. Um, I had known Hobbs. Um, one thing that we do in the Four Hoodsmen is try and raid uh, and host and, and meet other uh, creators of color uh, that are playing the same games as us. And Hobbs just so happened one time to be playing Monster Hunter, as he is wont to do. Uh, and uh, that's how I met him. That's how I learned about Nemesis. So when I was looking for a team, uh, after Omen Origins, uh, Nemesis is just kind of a, a a natural next step, and here we are. Fantastic! I'm glad you're here, and it's really cool. You you talked about a uh, diversity and and people you raid and look look for in different content creators. That's really cool because I myself I'm a mixed race person, so it's really really cool to be able to you know meet people that i feel kind of look like me and different things like yeah. that so it's always awesome to see that kind of come to light and that there are creators out there who care about that kind of stuff it's important yeah it really is and seeing video games come so far and like show characters that are more diverse especially ones that have more you know strong female leads and different things like that especially with all the cool ones coming up there's so many different games with female leads coming up that are going to be celebrated and they're also women of color too so that's going to be really fun to see those sides shine more in the gaming industry and yeah it makes you a special guest here to, to come in. That that way we can be able to talk about it and show that Nemesis is full of diverse different people. We've had VTubers. You know, Koi's a, one of our first non-binary VTubers we've had here. That's a really huge 
landmark and nemesis to see that we have so many different walks of life come through here so i'm really really just happy to have that side be shown and i just want to remind everyone in chat if you want to ask hood questions about apex or whatever else please do send it in chat we'll do our best to answer it and you know there's all kinds of good stuff to come from this episode hood do you do uh, any kind of charity work or anything like that mm. i d hmm. When's the last time I, I think I've done in my streaming career, I think five or six charity streams, um, which I think is Im uh, important. Uh, I mean, I'm not the biggest streamer. I don't I feel make, like, it's, you know, I agree. It's important for money. every streamer's journey yeah. to at least do a couple charity streams. Yeah, I, I think uh, and this, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I think that if you have any type of platform where you have a uh, following and people that that value your opinion and what you do, you have a responsibility to to f do good and and further some type of cause uh, that's going to help people. Um, just because you have the platform, it's there. Uh, if you're not using it like that, then you really probably shouldn't have it. Um, so yeah, I've done yeah, again about five or six uh, different charity streams, um, working with a variety of uh, of organizations, uh, Yellow Rose organization. Um, forgot the name but there's another organization that um actually like buys uh consoles and video games for kids that are in hospitals and sick and kind of have to stay there and don't have just access to games um so we've, we've worked with a lot of different organizations and i think um it's it's what i want to continue to do in the future awesome so um we were talking a little bit about your job earlier and you did like some pretty cool stuff in your day job would you like to share with the audience a little bit about that Sure, sure. So I'll, I'll start with what I, I first uh, told James, this, uh, the, the definition of my job, but I am a program manager for a STEAM education nonprofit. Uh, and essentially what we do is we take, we have a fleet of mobile maker spaces. Uh, so trucks, uh, vans that have a whole bunch of tools and um, material in them. We take them to schools. We do really cool maker projects uh, with kids. Uh, at these schools, trying to get them out of the classroom, learning about high and low tech tools. Uh, it's a really, really cool and fun job. Uh, and I actually don't get to talk about it enough, I feel like. <laughs> so like, what are the, what, what are some huge accomplishments you get to do with that, especially when you get to do streams and different stuff? Yeah, uh, well, first off, the, the benefit of working for a nonprofit is we are very dedicated to a mission and not really influenced by um, you know, outside factors, um, we can really set our own standards. Uh, so we work primarily with Title I schools, schools that are low income, uh, schools that serve kids that look like me. Um, so we're very intentional about um, our clientele because uh, those are the kids who aren't usually exposed to these types of uh, programs and materials and tools. Uh, so that's why I kind of enjoy working there and doing this work. Oh, fantastic. Heck yeah. <coughs> that's, that's awesome. That's genuinely awesome. And you mentioned yeah, it's, like... It's super fun. It's super fun. Yeah. You, do you have like any examples of your 3D print stuff? Yeah. I think I have a few on my bookshelf back here. One second. Okay. It'd be awesome to see him. Yeah. Yeah, he's got like... Really cool backdrop too. Holy crap! Uh, that, that's what I was gonna say. I really like <laughs> his stream room. It goes for a stream like, I mean, room. Like, I think mine is cool, but like I love his stream room. <laughs> it's a really clean, oh, professional you. look. <laughs> I want. So I'm moving uh, in, at the end of this month, um, and I'll be. I'll actually have a room that is just for streaming. This is my bedroom, so like uh, <laughs> the room is my bed over there. Ha, me too. <laughs> So I'll have a dedicated stream room, and I'm looking forward to uh, to decorating it and making it even better than this. But I have, um, yeah, I have a 3D printer. I'm really big into 3D printing. Uh, I've gone to a few conferences even uh, for 3D printing uh, here in Atlanta that you know teach you different techniques and show you like the latest in the industry. Um, I just like to print like figurines and stuff, stuff for like D and D. Uh, but one of the best parts about having a 3D printer is making your own stuff and that you don't have to spend money on. Uh, but here's a, a Space Marine. Oh, dope. Printed one uh, Ooh, that I found 40K on, on, figures. on, on I like it. Uh, Thingiverse. Yeah, yeah. Not the most detailed one, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I have a couple of D&D &D figurines. Yeah, so 
Oh, that's I, awesome. I, I haven't in a while, and I need to. Um, <laughs> but I like to DM. Uh, so, like, oh, I'll snap. Those, uh, those figurines on hand is always good. And I broke my he fob a long time ago. And the dealership wanted eight hundred dollars for a new key fob. Oh. So I found one on Thingiverse, and so I print my own key fobs. <laughs> um, so I don't have to buy one. Uh, but this is just like an extra one, just in case the one I have. As I say, don't you just have to kind of transfer the uh, motherboard or whatever the little exactly. board that's inside exactly. of it, and then the button's already there. You just pop those. Th- that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's smart yeah. too. Yeah. Holy cow! That's right about it. <laughs> That All right, so, so obviously cool. you got a big brain. How does that big brain help you make plays in Apex? He's been dying to ask that. <laughs> I have. I've been waiting to figure out how I can like incorporate the game that he plays the most into a question. Uh, I think I I approach Apex real seriously, and my friends will definitely uh, tell you that um, because I don't like to lose. So you know, uh, I'm I'm always trying to think of. You know what went wrong uh what do we need to improve stuff like that um i also come from a game that's really tactical uh before i was super big into apex i played uh rainbow six siege that was my main game i have over 2200 hours in siege um and that is just you know a super tactical slow-paced game where you have to just think uh, it's a lot of course like all fps's there's there's gunplay involved and there's gun skill involved uh but that one is just like it's execution slow. it's execution uh so when it's i came to apex peaking. yeah yeah definitely uh but when i came to apex the speed got faster like it's a faster game um and the movement is like fantastic it's something i have to get used to but that kind of like tactical thinking about our plays and stuff is kind of what transferred over that's fantastic and it really shows cuz like you end up in the champion list a lot more than I've ever done. And me. <laughs> I also play with a lot of really good people. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, if you guys have ever played, or if you've been in my stream, you've probably seen Storm at some point. Ascended Storm. Yeah. Fantastic Apex player. Um, another one, Urban Knight. Uh, oh, I've actually like seen me, Urban very, Knight. A very tactical thinking player. Uh, Peach even is getting very good. Um, I think he, he's already hit plat this uh the split so yeah i just like to play with people who are who are better than me <laughs> and, uh, and can, can teach me stuff so. so have you done like tournaments or or team stuff with them on that kind of capacity so, funny thing about tournaments i really want to play in some and i have found an organization that does uh weekly um apex tournaments I think like a hundred dollar prize pool nothing like huge um but i want to start doing those just to get some more tournament experience the first tournament i was supposed to do uh was back in april and then in a work accident on the day of the tournament, I broke two of my fingers. Ooh. I, I was yeah. going to try to incorporate that too to see yeah. how yeah. did you I broke how did you these face two that fingers. adversity? These two. Uh, so I was out from Apex and just streaming in general. Uh, I took that time uh, to take a break. I'd been streaming for the Four Hoodsmen. I'd been streaming my own channel for pretty much two years <laughs> nonstop. Uh, so I took that time. I took a break for like a month while my fingers just healed. Uh, it was just very hard to stream. Uh, it was uncomfortable. Uh, and I couldn't play the games that I wanted. So uh, I was out of Siege. Not Siege, I'm sorry. I was out of Apex um, for four weeks. Um, as soon as the doctor said I could take off my splint, though, I was, like, trying to, again, get them to bend so I could, you know, put them on the key so we could start playing again. Because uh, I, I just really missed uh, that game. But now you're back. You're now I'm back. You yeah. got two robotic fingers in replacement. <laughs> half cyborg. You, you're killing even better than before. Ah, beautiful. turning into the million dollar man. <laughs> Telling you, I actually did come back better, which was very weird. I don't know. I think I was watching a lot of Pro Apex because I couldn't play, <laughs> and so I was just still still learning. Right, still getting information. Oh, so you studied the tape and your time off yeah. to to come yeah, back stronger. Gotta study the vods. <laughs> Dang, that's Look so at cool. The pro players go back to your vod, just like, okay, so what could I have done differently in this situation? <laughs> it's a similar situation. What does he do? Okay, what do I do? Ah, that's why I died. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. So, what's your favorite Apex character? So I am a 
my like number one main is always going to be Bloodhound. Uh, that's who I really started off with. Uh, it's free wall hacks. Um, super cool character, non-binary character in Apex. Um, one of the I think the coolest aesthetics uh, in the game too. Uh, so I just really got attached to Bloodhound. Um, started playing them. Um, right now I am maining Vantage, the newest character to come out. Uh, I got really into sniping a couple of seasons ago um, when I just realized I was just kind of good at it. Um, so having a character that has a sniper rifle that is has extra use and extra utility, uh, which I just instantly connected with, and she has really good movement. Uh, I also main Rampart, uh, mainly because I really, really like the character. Um, Ramya is one of the funniest characters <laughs> in Apex uh, and just has really cool backstory and, and is integrated into the story well. And she has a big gun. She's got a big <laughs> gun, and that's her thing. Um, and then Valkyrie also. Uh, super great movement. Uh, probably the best heirloom, I think. Um, so, yeah. Those, that's those dope. <laughs> what was your right. first uh, FPS shooter? Very first FPS was probably Halo. Ooh. Halo classic. One. Halo 1. It was... Uh, I remember I, at the time, when I started playing Halo, I was maybe, when did Halo come out? 2000? 2001? What one? Halo Combat Evolved? Yeah, yeah. yeah the OG. Halo. 2001. Oh. 2001. Yeah. So I had, uh, we had some family friends when I was growing up. I didn't have, I had a Game Boy, but I didn't have like a console at the time. Uh, so we had family friends who, their parents were both in tech. And uh, so they had, you know, gaming computers and they had like two or three Xboxes in the house. Uh, so when I go over there, they had Halo and I'd play with them. Uh, and that's where I kind of fell in love with what one. Halo 2 is my favorite game of all time. If I was to choose, that's my, my deserted island game. If I was to take only one with me, it would be Halo 2. Um, but that's kind of where I fell in love with, uh, with FPS and, and shooters in general. <laughs> that's awesome. Big question. If What's Apex that? was never a thing. What would you be streaming? Ooh, what would I be streaming? <laughs> I think I would actually be a true variety streamer. I, I think when my channel was at its most successful uh, was when I was doing really weird indie games. Ooh. Uh, like different ones Ooh. every every day. There was one uh, that people really enjoy and my friends still talk about and I still talk about and I really need to replay it or do some of the DLC. Uh, but it's called Blasphemous. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a yeah, James. You know about Blasphemous. I know. I know about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blasphemous is Not... a crazy game. Uh, it's a like eight bit um, Souls like uh, platform game. Um, it is ridiculously fun, and the uh, uh, the artwork is is fantastic. The character design is super creative. Um, every like new enemy that you face is like something you've never seen before, uh, and I do not put that lightly. You have never seen some of this stuff before. <laughs> uh, it's got a really cool. Uh, all Souls games have you know the same mechanics. They just have like a different story and veneer on top. Uh, so this one's story and veneer I think is really uh, interesting and and different. Uh, it definitely still has that kind of like religious theme. Um, I think the the character you play is not named his, his name is the Penitent One. Uh, so. Uh, that if you, if you can't tell, we <laughs> really enjoyed that game. We played it a lot. Uh, but those those are the type of games I would be playing if I wasn't streaming Apex all the time. So you mentioned Souls like. Have, yeah. have you done the Elden Ring yet? So I I was playing Elden Ring a lot when it first came out. Like I th I think I got it day of, um, or I pre ordered it, um, and I I got maybe I think two thirds of the way through the game, and that's when I broke my fingers. And I, by the time I came back to you know, playing games in general, like all the Elden Ring hype had died down. So I just didn't feel an incentive to play it. So I still have not finished Elden Ring, but I did play. The <laughs> Same. <game. laughs> Same. I got like one more one. boss left and I, I don't know what happened. I saw a shiny and, and walked in a different direction of gaming. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've seen like, I know how it ends, right? Like I've seen TikToks about like, you know, um, Elden Ring all over the place when it was going on. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know what happens. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not big into Souls games. I played Elden Ring, but mm. it just, it's not my cup of tea. They're not for everybody. Mind you, 
the life of or lie of P or whatever the one the Pinocchio Souls like game that's coming out or whatever oh, that's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. Life that of Pi. That one looks cool. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not Life of Pi. <laughs> I know. Great movie. But... <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great good movie. movie. <laughs> but, but no, like that game looks interesting to me. Probably mm -hmm. won't get it. Probably will just like watch it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, to a, say. that's a wonderful part about like where gaming is now is that some games you don't have to play you can just watch them <laughs> and just mm -hmm. be satisfied with that which brings us to content creation what made you think that streaming was for you and something you wanted to pursue and turn into something as serious as you have it now got you uh well, james we were talking a little bit before um about like before hoodsman just like um how it started from a group of friends from college in college i didn't really game all that much um i had an xbox and that was it. like you know my friends would come over sometimes and play halo and that was about it uh i didn't like put a lot of time into it or anything uh after college though um when we started a podcast around gaming uh it was when i kind of picked it back up as like a hobby that i did a lot um just because i had to play games because we were talking about games and i i had to be able to you know talk about them intelligently um so uh, I like, I think I sold my Xbox and got a PS4 because everybody else had one. So I got a PS4, my very first PlayStation 2. And um, at the time, I was like, I was still living in like a student house. So was, I just had a room. It's terrible internet. Uh, the only thing I streamed was old school RuneScape off of my <laughs> MacBook Pro. Heck yes, there it is. There it is. He's a yeah. real grind. This is the man we need old in everyone's RuneScape. life. And then uh, Siege, because that was the the only game that I had bought uh, with my P with the PS4. Um, and so, like, when I realized, like, I was putting a lot of time into it and a lot of thought. Uh, and like even you know obviously money to to try and like make this a thing i was like oh clearly i really enjoy this so let's let's delve into this a little deeper uh and so you know this is this is where we are content creation now i have to i have to ask about cycle. something because i don't think chase suffers from it but i do but um how do you talk about a game intelligently I, I I have not mastered that craft, my friend. <laughs> I have not. <laughs> Fake it till uh, you make the, it, baby. The, the first part is making sure that you are not speaking from a place of emotion for a game. Ooh. Um, uh, and I think emotional arguments can be made for a lot of things, but not when it comes to like a literal mechanic of a game, right? Um, so you have to, I think, have have played it. Uh, I think if you have not done the research, you shouldn't speak on something. Um. I think that's a very basic concept that a lot of people need to learn. But I, I will um, make the case of like, well, I don't know if I'll like it or like make the case of like, hey, like, I've heard people talk about it. I personally haven't played it, so I'm just going off of what they say. Type. Yeah. Arguments. I mean, watching videos is a, is a form of research too, right? Are you looking at mm -hmm. something? Um, I just think that like, if if I'm having a podcast about a game, right? Like if I or like games in general, and I'm trying to provide information. And I should have the most accurate information. And the best way to get the most accurate information is playing that game. Um, so. Okay. Okay. So I need to actually try playing the games before yeah, I James, react. Finish oh. the game. Don't break <laughs> them. Play them. Well, you know. I, are you are you a game breaker, James? I am a those? game breaker. If I can throw mods onto a game, I will mod that game. Uh, because I come from a Bethesda fanboy. Uh, uh -huh. you know perspective uh -huh. of things okay. so you know every single fallout as soon as mods come in i don't care if i finish the main story it's getting modded it's gonna have that technicolor <laughs> dragon attacking me Love in that. skyrim it's gonna have the death claws that look like engine. randy savage it's it's gonna happen it's gonna happen so have you all seen the modded spider-man no yes dude those mods look <laughs> awesome like, spider-man just got changed on. it theme or i just pc in general um and yeah the modders have gotten to it my favorite spider-man i've seen so far has been uncle ben's tombstone as <laughs> what that is the <laughs> Honestly, my favorite mod for that has been the venom one because venom they actually good. like switched a lot That's of stuff good. and the i've voice seen the spider pig everything one too. <laughs> spider yeah. pig yeah. oh man 
Those are those are two my two favorites, the Spider Pig. I think I saw a Peter Griffin one. one. <laughs> Peter, I think I saw that one too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So Spider Man's on the radar for me now. Thank you, thank you. I might have to mod that one and not finish it. So <laughs> new goals, new goals are made tonight. You also mentioned uh, emotion when you're when you're t- doing games and how to you know separate those two. Chase doesn't do that like ever. Like because emotion drives me. If I'm getting <laughs> upset, it's just gonna make me want to do it again. And that way, I don't get upset and I get happy. It, it it does make better content when you see him rage and then you see oh, him definitely. get excited when he overcomes the obstacle. Exactly. I just think you can exactly. you can love a bad game. Like it's okay. It's okay also to love a bad game. It doesn't like the games that you love and really enjoy don't have to be like the best quality games out there. Like that's how i feel it, it's zone. okay and people feel like just because like a game is <laughs> it's the best game and that's just not always true my favorite game is halo 2 that's not the best game it's a very good game but it's not the best one uh, definitely anyway, halo reach uh, halo... agreed yeah <laughs> agreed it was the it was the love letter goodbye to the community when they released reach and not gonna lie i was in a room full of grown men we all right. worked jobs in construction, <laughs> and at the end of Reach, when that happened, you know, when the credits rolled, we, we were all just kind of teared up, like, is this the end, man? Is this over? Turns out, yes, it Reach. was. Reach yeah. is a, is a the Reach, now. everything just went, like, Reach was peak, like, we were here at Reach, and then it went. <laughs> Halo 4 wasn't terrible. And I say that in a way of, like, Halo 4 wasn't that bad. It was playable. Then you had Halo 5, and then it just went <laughs> in the trash. Yeah. Halo Infinite has been super frustrating because I really, really enjoyed the campaign, and which is the main reason I play Halo games. I'm the not... campaign I, was I a like nice callback. I, I love the campaign. I love, like, open world Halo, that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Like, don't... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. But the way they have treated the online aspect of that game. Mm-hmm. Is... <laughs> like... Do they hate themselves? <laughs> the game? Us? Like, I don't know what <laughs> you did. When you charge $5 for a change of color on your character, yes. and it's like, let's go back. Let's go back to Halo 3, the first Halo that had online multiplayer, and you had literally gradients of colors going from the top of the screen down. And the you cheaters who always color. got the Hayabusa armor because they, they somehow got all the skulls. I had Hayabusa. Yeah. Hayabusa. Yeah. Y'all made it seem easy. <laughs> like having to solo that to get my Hayabusa was not no, fun. No, no, no. The modders had the recon helmet before, before it became, you know, everyone could get it. Mm-hmm. Well, do you all remember the first time you got like absolutely wrecked in like an FPS shooter? I, I, <laughs> I, I, I relive that moment every day at stream. He does. He does. Please, bro. Please, we don't, we don't get you an aim lab, bro. For the record, no, 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 no. 35 minutes before what has not been named. So we're, we're at a record I'm here. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> Without saying it, James knew what I was talking about. It's not that I miss. It's just either they are in a spot where I don't see them or they're just better. They're and just better. I, I want to address Ivy. Yeah, like, like us in Fallout 76, there's a lot of emotion in how that game gets grindy and how sometimes you get one-shotted and it just sucks. Also, Rapid Dash says, Hood Guard is so drippy. Oh, welcome, Rapid Dash. That's actually a sick name. Are, 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 they, a, are they a fan of a show? <laughs> are they a fan of Pokemon? <laughs> oh, man. But yeah. No, I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break it. Yeah, Tarkov. It's not even. It's not even the fact. I have to. I have to because it, it's not gonna make sense if I don't say it. If I don't say the name, people are gonna be like, well, "What game is he talking about?" Blah, 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 blah. So, it's not that I miss shots. Yeah, there are times where it's like, ah, dookie dookie aim, and they just outgun me. But there are other times where it's like, okay, he's just better. He has better armor. He's got a better build on his gun where he can literally shoot straight and not have to worry about anything. I mean, unless you are Pred, right? <coughs> Odds are someone out there is better than me. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, that, that is like, 
I, I have had to really, and I think most people have to have go through this with FPS games, but I've had to make sure that I'm not blaming the game. <laughs> I'm not the best. I'm not. If I was the best, I'd have a streaming career and uh, an ALGS contract, but I'm not the best. So I, you know, when I get when I get beamed, I have that's why I have to reevaluate. I have to look at what I was doing because clearly something went wrong. Went wrong, um, and that's really hard for people to <coughs> them, accept that. It, not even some like sometimes the majority of the time it's you. You die because of you. Yeah, not because of anybody else. Hundred percent. Usually 100%. your user error error, but well, you know when you're a young kid and you come from the school of uh, Quake. You usually try Ooh. to blame the game for everything and not take it upon yourself because Games the game was broke. <laughs> like, I, uh, um, back home in, in, I'm from Texas originally. I live in Atlanta now, but I'm originally from Fort Texas. And uh, there's a convention in Dallas, Texas called QuakeCon mm-hmm. that happens every year. Uh, and that was like the, that's the first convention I ever went to was QuakeCon. Super cool. It's like a bring your own computer convention. Um, so they have like a huge hall <laughs> with tables where you can bring uh, your build and God, network and play with everybody. That, though. It's uh, still like, imagine if you're fun. out of it's town, like trying to get your whole PC through TSA. <laughs> to fly. I get it, I get it, but people did it. <laughs> like so I, I don't think I would want to go through that hassle. <laughs> I saw some of the coolest builds. One guy built a seven foot tall Lego Optimus Prime and put his Ooh. computer inside that. Ooh, that's yeah. cool. That one is. guy had a grill and you open it up the monitors on the like the top part of the grill <laughs> computers inside of it and the keyboards like attached to a plexiglass that's over it all see <laughs> i think some really cool stuff is i've seen some really amazing builds some of them like the pc is inside the desk like you it's literally part of the desk with like glass over top of it or plexiglass or whatever and then you you're literally like playing on your pc yeah i think i follow some tiktok page where uh these guys build um, overkill pcs not overkill uh i think it's like in case e in case hmm. um and they've made like wooden desks that have been like obviously like they do woodworking and stuff um but they put uh the computer in there i think they're on their third version but yeah that's that's super cool i feel like it may be hard to upgrade <laughs> <laughs> but still a, like a very cool concept most definitely. A concept that I always thought was just the coolest was like those fish tank PCs. Oh yeah, yeah. where it's yeah. underwater, well, underwater mineral, it's mineral oil. water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, also very hard to upgrade. Very hard to upgrade. People <laughs> say it's just it's so annoying if something goes wrong. Like, is it really? I don't know. Is it worth it? Like, is it worth it for the the cooling that it provides? I feel like it's not. Uh, Might as well just get an AIO and call it a day. I usually watch tech YouTubers and stuff who talk about PC performance, and one of them, Jay's Two Cents, like a real pro. He he builds all these computers for celebrities too, but he's recently said that water cooling is not the way to go for these uh, computers now. It's like he says, get an AIO because for those who don't know, an AIO is a radiator that creates moisture and dries it up and recycles it at the same time. So you should reasonably never have to refill any kind of water or liquid into this. So it's really cool that he's like kind of debunked how the the cooling between a water cooler and then the regular AIO you can buy on UEG or go to a micro center or Best Buy or something and get actually will perform and be safer for your PC compared to the water cool system that you have to refill you can't spill anything you have to reroute all the pipes back into the place they were because you have to take it apart to refill it too it's really extensive stuff so yeah definitely uh look into an aio first y'all water cooling looks super cool it does it's an art it's an art there's a uh i'm gonna keep going back to tiktok because it's the best video platform out right now but um mods by ben that guy makes like $25,000 $25,000 modded computers <laughs> with like custom gold piped uh, water cooling. Those are crazy. It looks super cool. It's just not always worth it. And you're right. It's a lot of maintenance. It's a lot of upkeep. Uh, and unless, you know, you're doing 
8K video rendering with twin 3090s and 128 <laughs> gigs of RAM. Like, you don't really need, like, the cooling like that. I, I have a AIF. I have a uh, NZXT one. Oh, nice. Got a, got the little GIF on it, and, uh, and we move. <laughs> oh, you got the one with the LCD screen? Lucky you. Yeah. I just got one that says NZXT, and, like, I got it to, like, flashing. Because I got a whole, like, Vegeta-type mm. Vegeta theme, theme going on. <laughs> nice. Nice. For my PC, because the 3070 that I have has a little LCD screen. I mean, you can't oh, so see it cool. of my big my, logo. My computer's uh, name is Michonne, like from <laughs> Walking Dead. So there's a little Michonne bobblehead on it. And the, the GIF on the uh, the AI is like one from uh, her in The Walking Dead. Oh, that's nice. dope. <laughs> and welcome, everyone, from uh, Hood's community. Thank you for coming, Neon. We we have some of the greatest hits in chat. Do you do you recognize everybody there, Hood? You want you want to say hi oh, yeah. to anybody? Oh, yeah, shout out to Dez uh, and Rappa, two of my uh, my community members, uh, a very funny pair. Uh, Honey October's in here. That's my girlfriend. Ooh. Um, who, oh, hey Vengeance, hey Hobbs, my friends. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yes. What's up, Hobbs? How you doing? Make the emperor proud, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Hobbs, actually, since I've gotten into 40K, I have not talked to Hobbs about it, and that, I feel like that is... You're missing out point. on a great conversation. I yeah. know! Mm -hmm. I know. I only talked to Peter about it. <laughs> I'm not even really into 40K, but listening to Hobbs, and like, because we'll, we'll go on tangents, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's great. I love Hobbs. <laughs> that man yeah, can I, fire the 40K lore in such an unreal That's way <laughs> i am not i'm definitely not into like the tabletop of 40k uh, i feel like when it's incredibly expensive and too very it's a lot and the games can go on <laughs> forever this is not my thing um but the lore is like some of the best lore out it's so extensive and there's so much of it <laughs> that's awesome so Hood, are there any upcoming games you're kind of excited to see or yes uh so i just recently got uh a playstation 5 Ooh, my girlfriend. lucky Ooh. you um and so all the all the ps5 exclusives now uh god of war i'm obviously super excited for i'm doing my replay of the first god of war now um uh, for spoken super excited about yeah uh, yeah we were talking again before about diversity black women lead in this like fantasy rpg game super super excited for that one um hogwarts legacy yeah Ooh, there it is. <laughs> i think that's what everybody's really waiting for right now like i i think everyone has wanted an rpg an open world rpg harry potter game where you get to attend hogwarts that has nothing to do with harry potter <laughs> that's exactly what hogwarts legacy is um so i'm excited about that uh, I just made a TikTok earlier about um, the collector's edition and how it's probably not worth three hundred dollars, <laughs> um, but I really want to spend three hundred dollars on it. So what's um, it come with? <laughs> it comes with the deluxe edition of the game and okay. a floating wand book. Ooh, yeah, it's a fancy, book fancy. and you plug it in and you put a <laughs> wand on top and it floats. And it spins. <laughs> I don't know if that's worth. Okay, so the deluxe edition is eighty dollars, so that would be worth two hundred and twenty dollars. I'm not sure it's worth that. Hmm. Um. So yeah, Hogwarts Legacy definitely. Um. I know a game that was just announced. Uh. But I'm like, it's right up my alley. Is a uh, Dune Awakening. Oh uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. The Conan Exiles <laughs> Dune game. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love Dune. <coughs> Dune is one of the most underrated pieces of sci-fi. Uh, so I'm glad they're doing more with that. So I'm going to have to also, get you in on that group then because we are eagerly awaiting some Dune. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually have to get Spice Wars. Uh, it's a the strategy game that's out for Dune. Um, what else? I feel like I'm missing a very important <laughs> one. Redfall. I think that's what it's called. Redfall, yeah, replaced, which is like another uh eight bit souls like game. Oh uh, yeah. Like in a cyberpunk future. Um Pokemon Violet. Yeah, that's gonna be a fun yeah, one. See, I don't know if I birthday. wanna get the new Pokemon or not. 
Like, I'm sitting there and I'm debating you it in my say head. that, and then five months from now, when we're both playing it, I don't want to hear anything, okay? <laughs> like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also Warhammer Darktide. Warhammer oh, Darktide. That That's one the one looks I was going great. See. Another the, horde uh, shooter, the, yeah. The horde shooter, yeah. But in the 40k universe, and I was just watching <laughs> uh, a YouTube video uh, that kind of was like, uh, explaining the the lore behind Dark Tide and how they're tying lore into the game, because it's really hard to do that in a horde, horde shooter. Like people, you don't hop on Left for Dead for the, the lore. You hop on it to slaughter hordes of zombies. Yeah. Uh, so you know that's that's uh, the focus on lore is kind of contradictory uh, to the genre itself. So how they tie that in, I think, is going to be really interesting. Yeah, I can't wait yes, to see either. Give me more Warhammer 40 case. <laughs> and what's up, Maz? If you're referring to the Hogwarts Legacy, I can I know you're most certainly excited. And even though you say it's expensive, I know you're gonna get it. <laughs> All right, yeah. <clears throat> so, Hood, do you have like any upcoming projects you're you're hyped about? Like any. Me. tournaments community events w what you got going on sure um i am as far as like my own channel uh i don't have anything lined up right now uh i'm mainly focusing right now on like my other content creation definitely streaming i have a very regular stream schedule i stream four days out of the week so i do that a lot but i'm really focusing on my other content right now um but the four hoodsman we do a lot of events throughout the year we do apex gauntlets which are uh, a whole weekend where we all play apex and try to get the highest stats um this coming october we're going to do a 24-hour stream uh all scary games um so we do that every year this will be <laughs> the third time we've done it actually uh this will be year three um we also do what's called hood field day uh, where we just play a whole bunch of community games with everybody um so yeah we, we got we got a, a lot of stuff on uh, on the horizon <laughs> uh in, in that community that's really awesome and um, is it easy for you to coordinate these events by now or, or what are, what are the challenges for those for new streamers to know about going into making community events yeah i mean just like with any production you have to triple check everything um making sure that even small things like making sure the date is right on the flyer right um i think the biggest obstacle when it comes to organizing these things is um how to present it right uh, because depending on what the layout of the event is or if it's a tournament or if it's like everybody playing like who is going to be streaming what's the view going to be like how are we going to coordinate like multiple people's view it's it's a lot of of that kind of like uh pre-work that you have to do uh and and making sure you set up everything accordingly before you you know before the day of right uh which is you know what you should do for most things but uh, the procrastinating when it comes to these things is really just going to hurt you in the end. It really does. And uh, I think we're all, we all feel tenured enough in our stream careers at this point to say it, it never gets easier. There's always something to think of. Like when I do community events and different things, I have to think about, okay, what's going to pop? What are people going to enjoy? How am I going to keep it consistent? Especially if I'm going to go longer than my normal stream time because I'm not one of those streamers that can stay up 12 hours without complaining know, about it. I'm old. Bro. I'm old. I can I'm go old. three to four hours, three to five hours, anywhere in that range. Like, and then after that, I'm like, you know, I've done a I couple a of 12 point, hours. Not for me. I get, to, I did one 12 hour and I'm not, I, I was not happy. Like I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But there became, there came a time where I'm like, I'm really tired of just kind of talking and being on camera. Like, you know, streamers <laughs> get to that thing where they're like, we're, I'm tired of being on camera. Yeah. I'm tired yeah, of, like, yeah. I don't want to be perceived anymore. Like, <laughs> like, I just want to sit and play the game and be quiet. I don't want anyone to know I exist right now. So exactly. Like, let's bring this full circle, Chase, because I joined you for eight of that, 12, remember? And you uh, know what game we played till the very end? I think I we. Too. Yeah. Yeah. We were all miserable. I think. Like, it got to a point where, like, I was just like. <laughs> I hate, I don't want to, I, that, that's probably why I don't want to play the game anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like, you binge yourself on it and ruined it for I yourself. I binged it, and now I'm just like, nah. it was, just, it, the game is not entertaining to me. I don't, I don't mm. see myself going back to it. 
I know a lot of people, <clears throat> like my mods, they love Dying Light. They love the game, and they're like, oh, we're going to play it in October when, like, the DLC drops. And mind you, I got the, I got the expensive version that gave me the DLC, so it's like, yeah, I'll have it. What are you going to play? Exactly. <laughs> That's a big O. nope. If I do one stream. <laughs> <clears throat> they'll, they'll guilt you into one stream for sure, and then you'll mm -hmm. play it, like, two hours, and you'll go back to the... The T word game. The T word game. That's what I'm going to start calling it now. We all have a return to <laughs> company games. <laughs> Even variety streamers, bro. Even so outside of Apex, what is your go-to game? Because obviously, you know, you need to play games when you're not streaming, when you're not doing Apex-related content. What do you go to? Yeah, yeah I like Civilization VI. Ooh, okay. Love, I love me some Civ. Game. I like that strategy game. Um, I like Darkest Dungeon. Um fantastic uh fantastic game um what else oh i've really gotten into this game recently called hellish court um which is a like a fencing game hmm. um but it's like you like each character has a different uh sword style from actual <laughs> sword fighting uh and you yeah fence somebody else super cool <laughs> Uh, that's been a really fun game. Uh, Century Age of Ashes is a really, really dope dragon riding game. game. Yeah, <laughs> dragon riding arena shooter game. That game's <coughs> fire. Um, and then, yeah, just trying to work through my my backlog of games that I, I have, like, 100 games on Steam and maybe have finished, like, 15 of them. Yeah. <laughs> I've mentioned a really good game, oh, Cult of the Lamb. Watching am, him play it I makes me want Cult to get it. Yeah, I'm playing Cult of the Lamb right now. Also, that's on Sundays. I kind of that's my dedicated day, really, to kind of step away from Apex. Um, so I'll play like a lot of indie games or things like Cult of the Lamb. That game has been really fun. I'm looking forward to playing it uh, this coming weekend. Uh, but it's it's a roguelike village sim. So you get that action part. You kind of get that resource management fixed in. <laughs> I feel like uh, Twitch is what makes it fun though, because you can have all your yeah. all your people from chat in there. I wonder yeah, how it works without that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, it, it's very cool to like look and like see like three or four of my community members like as members of the cult. Report, you know? Yeah, uh, like, and, like it they just... even have like commands that can affect things in game, like the the help and hinder uh, option, right? So like they can like the it's so much chat interaction and that. Like as games evolve and as as Twitch becomes, or just broadcasting in general, because hopefully there will be a better company than Twitch. Comes at some point. Um, I, I wasn't gonna say nothing. I will say it. That they, they're on the, they're they're on ass. my shit list. Um, <laughs> Crap but, list. Um, but like more games need to have that that chat and like Twitch mm -hmm. and broadcast interaction. Uh, have you guys ever played Speedrunners? No, yeah, I've seen I've a lot of it, it. though. Speedrunners is awesome. Uh, I don't like racing games, but that is a superhero racing game where you get a like <laughs> grappling hook. It's so cool. Um, but one of the first things that really drew me to that game and like wanted, like made me want to play it was they had like on their front screen, um, like the Twitch link to their official page, and the top streamers for like who were streaming um, Speedrunners at the time. And you could scroll through it and see who was streaming that game and go like mm -hmm. watch them. That. Like, why don't most games have that? Now, I know, like, in bigger games, like, obviously, it's going to be like, oh, Nick Merckx is playing Fortnite, and Ninja's playing Fortnite. Obviously, they're going to be at the top of the list. But that was a smaller indie game. There was a lot of times where we would be at the top of that list. And that was, like, people would come to our uh, to our streams from that. Uh, and I think that's that's the way to go when, you, when you're making a game now. <clears throat> it's going to be online. I think another really good game that did good Twitch integration. Mind you, when it first came out, it was very <laughs> spotty. But Borderlands 3... Had a very good Twitch integration. It did. You could earn. You could earn the loot. You could earn the loot just by you know being in chat. You could earn loot for your own character in the game. You could summon a badass boss. Yeah. Not a swear. That's actually the name of the. That's actually that's the name of the, <laughs> the enemy in Borderlands. It's badass count. boss. That makes yeah. sense. That's and like it would be your sense. name. Like it'd be your Twitch handle as the boss's name. That's cool. And that person, and if you died, they would actually get loot based off of killing you with their character that they dropped into your game. So, like, everybody won either way. 
they they would probably get like a some in-game currency and some different items like that if you killed their boss but if, if they killed you they got some pretty sick weapons because i got some pretty sick weapons dropping on people <laughs> like it, it was awesome. just fun it was fun but we are coming up to the last three minutes of our podcast here hood is there anything that you'd like to say anything that you're excited like you know anything about your stream <laughs> or your handles where people can find you etc cetera, etc cetera. Sure, sure. Uh, it's basically hood guarded everywhere. Um, the only exception I think is maybe Twitter, where it's hood underscore guard, um, and then on <laughs> on Bungie on Halo, it's hood guardian because somebody else had it. So that's that's about it. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you guys for having me. I was telling James before that this is why I love Nemesis. Uh, it's the fact that we are in, encouraged to create and are given avenues to create, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> A lot of teams surprisingly don't have that, even though they're content creation teams. <laughs> they don't have a lot of avenues and a lot of like opportunity for for their creators and their streamers. And that's why I love this team and why I, you know, am trying to bring people in and, and you know preach it to the to the mountaintops because it's, <coughs> it's, a, it's a great place to develop your your craft. Most definitely. We're happy to have you here with us along for the ride. Me and Chase, we're just bit players in this whole big old family environment and they've given us so many different opportunities we're so grateful for that i mean just getting a show where we get to interview each other and kind of show people different sides to our uh our creation inside everyone, nemesis everyone has their own story yeah you know we mentioned at the beginning about koi being one of our first non-binary vtubers that's huge we have so many different people of color we have so many different walks of life so many beautiful cells that do different games from horror games to shooters to mmos uh, dnd which you know y'all should be checking out jester's core on sundays it is a popping show they have a great uh kingdom hearts campaign i believe right now but we have so many beautiful things going on within nemesis it's only going to get better we're going to feature more people like hood guard and we're going to have some great conversations you're going to get to meet some of your favorite creators on a different level sometimes transparency in our own brands is tough so having these kinds of shows where we can have conversations and talk you know us all three being streamers in our own brands you can find me james on them everywhere from twitch uh to twitter to instagram to tiktok you can find vengeance where can they find you uh you can find me on twitch uh vengeance gaming you can find me on twitter vengeance gm score ttv i think that's what my twitter is i don't know anymore it's, <laughs> it's i think uh you can find me on tiktok vengeance gaming you can find me on youtube vengeance gaming i'm i i really need to get a kick in the butt here soon to get actually start pushing stuff out but you know work makes me tired okay <laughs> it's hard completely but, understandable um, I don't know, you guys probably already know this, I am personally a Tarkov streamer, I do do a little bit of other variety, I do branch off every now and then, but that's my main thing. James, what type of streamer are you? Because you didn't mention that. Ugh, I'm, I'm chaos. I want to say that's the best way to describe me, because I'll do music, I'll play guitar on stream, I'll create beats on stream, because I got like a little beat pad over here I create stuff with, I do a ton a ton of uh, rpg games too like mainly people know me as mr fallout because i do fallout 76 do fallout 4 i have dedicated groups for those huge groups we've uh gotten to do some great stuff with that for american heart association this year where we raised a killer amount of money just within like one day's time so thank you guys again for that if y'all are here especially ivy you were here for that that was some crazy times but yeah, I'm just chaos. I do a little bit of everything. I'm always a team player. If you got a game you want to throw my way, I'm going to play it. We're, we're going to see what we're going to do with it. So, yeah, that's that's the catch. <laughs> a true variety streamer. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's nice not being put in the box, but then you're put in the box of not being put in the box, and that's mm -hmm. got its own set of complications. You, you know, yeah. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, thank you guys so much for checking us out. We do have Jester's Court coming up this Sunday. We have on Mondays Beyond Nemesis podcast. Cup of Robots is a host on Tuesday nights who does a variety stream. 
uh, with uh, trivia games, I think some Jackbox. There's there's a little bit of different things where he does giveaway prizes and different things like that too. So if you like that kind of stuff, check him out on Tuesday nights on the main channel here. We're going to have a few more shows down the pipeline. Can't announce them all right now, but there's going to be some amazing content. And definitely want to say thank y'all to watching us. And we will see you soon. Bye-bye. Peace.